Hello, I'm Doug, stand-up physicist sitting down in front of a whiteboard to discuss my part of my series of uh, tensors versus space-time numbers. I'm going to focus on symmetric and anti-symmetric tensors and how I can do similar but not identical things using space-time numbers. So what are symmetric tensors? Well, if you've got a tensor and it's got nice three indexes, U, V, W, well, and what if you change the order of those things? It's symmetric. It doesn't care. It's cool with that. All right, same thing. All right, and what then is an anti-symmetric tensor? And I bet viewers of this video already know the answer, T, U, V. Switch those around, and you're going to have to toss in a minus sign, but uh, otherwise, they're the same. So how are we going to do similar things to space-time numbers? Well, we can't use subscripts because they're tensors of rank zero. You know, it's like, would you put a subscript on a real number or a complex number? The answer is no. Those are formally subgroups of space-time numbers, so you can't do it to uh, that sort of thing. So instead, we're going to think about, you know, double products and triple products of, uh, of space-time numbers and see if they behave at all like this. And if you think about the product of two numbers like this, it can actually broken, be broken always into a symmetric part and an anti-symmetric part with uh, this very simple sort of trick. You do plus and then you reverse the order over two because you just kind of doubled everything. And then you look for the anti-symmetric part. Ah, and you don't use a plus again. That'd be silly. Minus V U over two. All right. And so obviously those reverse guys cancel. This already has a bit of nomenclature to it. It's just a typical cross product. I'm going to develop my own nomenclature for this. I'm just going to put a box around it. Just 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 so it's very similar to the other one um and takes us uh writing Okay, so this is the symmetric product. This is the anti-symmetric or cross product. And you can do that for any space-time number you ever come across. All right, so how are we going to deal with this triple product here? Well, we're going to just go U box cross, I guess we'll call it. Put a parenthesis around it. W and that just equals W box cross V box cross U. Now one of the things I do to make sure I'm not like missing something is I plug these things into Mathematica and just you know double check it and it didn't work. <laughs> so like ah uh, that's why I, I kind of like this is I I'm working on stuff that's so specific it could say no you're you're wrong or you're missing something and what I was missing was that this box times operator is not associative in other words this does not equal if I put the parentheses like this. And so that was a bit of a surprise to me. Now, it shouldn't have been a surprise to me, okay? <laughs> because it turns out this is a well-known property of the cross product, which is, of course, uh, something that people uh, use all the time and is okay. Um, so this is, is this non-associative. Again, it's a quality. It doesn't, uh, uh, of this particular type of operation. It doesn't mean it's evil and it can never be used. It always has to be used keeping this in mind. And the way I eventually saw it was when you do this first one, you put um, U and V things into a scalar and then multiply it by uh, W. Whereas with this one, you put the, the W and V stuff into the scalar and then multiply it by the U. And those are not going to line up 
uh, perfectly. And I actually thought about, well, is there some kind of rotation I should be able to do to um, make this one equal that? Well, there should be. I just didn't figure it out. <laughs> Little riddle. All right. So let's think about the um, the anti-symmetric guy. And uh, this one is actually well known even in the quaternion world. All you have to do is switch it around. But I said, you know, it's always going to be a little bit different. Uh, that's just the nature of this game. And so um, when I thought about the triple product, I mean, what happens here? If you go T U V W, and then you want to go T W V U. Well, it goes one, two, to get the W in front, then another one to get that three, so that means it should be a minus. Now, with this, uh, with the quaternions though, um, when I thought about it, I said, hmm, uh, you go with a U cross V cross W, and now you have to say, I'm doing these guys first, and so you do one operation where you put W, jumps them both in one operation. And then another operation to get you to uh, this. And since that's just two and that's even, this guy with the quaternion stuff is going to end up being... Um, the same value. Uh, it's not going to flip signs. Okay, so uh, it's just a little, little subtle difference that, again, to keep in mind. So the point of this video is to say that yes, any quaternion product can be looked into as a, a, a pair of operations uh, that are non-associative. Uh, they give you an even kind of part and an odd part kind of part. It's not the same as uh, tensors, but there is overlap. And that's the kind of thing um, I'm looking for here as I try and develop space-time numbers as a more generally useful thing. Thank you very much.